Do you have the gift of gab and like talking about interesting topics? Are you often called opinionated by your friends and family? Then come to Anchor where you can be all of the above and get paid for it. Along with being one of the easiest systems to create contact with, Anchor supplies everything you need and can be used from your smart smartphone or computer. They even distribute your content for you so that you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Just download the Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Hello, Internet family. This is Anjanette Potter, also known as Adam's Rib, and this is day five or post five of my series, 28, 29 Days of Black Feminism. So the lady that we are going to be discussing today is Sojourner Truth. Um, Sojourner Truth, if you don't know, had it was a very integral part of the women's suffrage movement. movement. Um, She is famous for her speech, Ain't I a Woman, which I will be discussing as part of my background on her. So, um, Sigourner Truth was born Isabella Bell Bomfrey, um, sometime in 1797, and she died um, November 26, 1883. She was an African-American abolitionist and women's rights activist. Activist, she was born into slavery. Um, the the name of the farm I think was Swart Swartkill in Ulster County, New York. Um, she escaped to freedom in 1826 with her infant daughter. She went to court to recover her son in 1828. She became the first black woman to win such a case against a white man. Um, she gave herself the name Sojourner Truth in 1843 after she became convinced that God called her to leave the city and go into the countryside, testifying the hope that was in her. Um, she, her best known speech was delivered extemporaneously. in um, 1851 at the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. The name of the speech, like I said before, was Ain't I a Woman? She helped recruit black troops for the Union Army during the Civil War. She tried unsuccessfully after the war to secure land grants for the federal government for former slaves. Um, you probably have heard the promise of Fort. When people talk about reparations post Civil War, and they talk about the whole forty acres and a mule, that was you know the promise forty acres and a mule. Well, Sigourner Truth was a part of trying to make that happen. Um, she was included in the Smithsonian mag. She was included in Smithsonian Magazine's list of the hundred most significant. Americans of all time. She was one of 10 or 12 children born to James and Elizabeth Bomfrey. Um, She became a Methodist in 1843 and changed her name to Sigourner Truth, as I said earlier, um, June 1st. Then she began to travel preaching about the abolition of slavery. That was her original um, mission. She attended um, Millerite at Adventist camp meetings. Now, Millerism was a Christian movement founded by William Miller that believed the second coming would happen in 1844. Um, Of course, that never happened. So she wound up leaving because Jesus failed to show up. One thing we were always taught was if if you hear a particular date, you know that he's not coming because the word of God says that no man knows the hour. So none of us know, only the father knows when he will be sending him back, sending the bridegroom back. So, you know, that didn't happen. Um, 
She joined the Northampton Association of Education of yeah, education and um, education industry in Northampton, Massachusetts. They supported women's rights, religious tolerance, and pacifism. So she um, she dictated her after that she dictated her memoirs to her friend Olive Gilbert. Um, William Lloyd Garrison um, privately published her book, and the book was called The Narrative of Sojourner, Sojourner Truth, um, A Northern Slave in 1850. Um, so you're probably wondering, like, slavery was in New York? It was, and I'm going to look up some more information on that since we are in Black History Month so we can talk about um, slavery in the northern states. I just got the idea for that looking at this because I was like, well, yeah, um, we're prob- they probably once they hear this, if, you know, unless you're a historian yourself and have been looking all that information up, which is cool. I like to be able, I always say that every out of every, um, like every, every other preacher likes to hear everybody yelling and screaming and hollering amen. And I'm not going to say that that doesn't, um, move me a little bit, but I'm more moved when I can get you to that holy hush. When I get you to that point, when I get my listeners to the point where there's, where, where I can, my, I always felt like my mission was to provoke, is to provoke thought. And I don't mean, you know, make you think like, Lord, I mean, I like to stir, I like to provoke thought. When someone tells me that something that I'm saying is moving them to want to search the scriptures for themselves, that's my blessing. Because I want you to be able to search the scriptures for yourself because I never want you to ever run into anybody that can con you or get over on you. I don't believe God calls us to not know. The word of God says that the Holy Spirit was given to us so that we will not be orphans. So I don't believe, you know, he doesn't dwell, he doesn't, he doesn't get off on you not wanting. He gives wisdom, you know, liberally without abrading you. So you want to know some things. Anyway, um, back to our (laughs) subject. Um, um, Miss Truth purchased a home in the, in the future Florence, um, in the future, I'm guessing the neighbor, the, the area was called Florence in Northampton, uh, Massachusetts for $300. Now, this is important because it was enough for a woman to own land in the first place, and much less a former slave, you know, a black woman and a former slave. So she, so her, so her, her she was, mo- um, Miss Truth was mainly, mainly basically called, she was, one, uh, she was an early female, in, what they call an inerrant preacher. So an inerrant preacher is a preacher that not, is not necessarily, you know how we talk about in churches, set men, which is usually a pastor. Well, inerrant preachers basically go, they travel and preach the word. They travel and go from church to church. And, you know, um, they really would be called not only preachers, they really have what what you would call the teaching gift and everything so they they also teach similar to a Joyce Meyer or different other ones Juanita Bynum different ones that feel led or called of the Lord to deliver the word or preach on so you know part of preaching is also social commentary because we give the word you know what does God have to say you know we kind of reveal the times to people, you know, the times that we're in and different other stuff like that. So um, she basically answered a call to do that, which, like I said, we're still going through things with men, women call, being called to ministry because you still have people who don't think that women can be used even now. So she was a early, I won't say she was a predecessor, but maybe but she was an early, uh, she was one of the earliest women in um, Christian history to be called to go forth and preach. And um, let me see here. 
So one of the first places that she spoke at was the first um, National Women's Rights Conference in Wor- Worcester, um, Massachusetts. In her, spe- um, in her speech, Ain't I a Woman, she demanded equal rights for women and all blacks. This speech was prompted by Ms. Truth's demanding and composed presence. Um, as she spoke, the way she carried herself prompted the audience to question whether or not she was really a female. <laughs> okay, now think about um, in recent years, who else got that charge? Um, Sarita Williams, several other women that people don't think fit the mode. Uh, even Michelle Obama, you know, as, as beautiful as she is and as wonderful as she is, Black women still have to contend with that whole thing of people thinking that we're not feminine enough because we don't fit the traditional trope of what constitutes feminine. And I'm, I, and you know, that's going to be something that I hit hard on this year, period. So, um, let me see here. So, several different versions of the woman's speech were recorded. The most famous one was recorded by Frances Dana Barker Gage, where Ain't I a Woman was asked four times during the course of the speech. Um, Gage's um, 1863 account, because she wrote two, she recorded a she recorded a 1851 version, and then she recorded a 1863 version. So there were differences in several spaces in it and if you really want to look up you know dig a little bit deeper you can go this information most of the information that i will be providing to you um i think with the exception of kimberly um the cole foster um foster but probably other ones too because i'm going to not just go with the traditional ones um but i'm also going to be doing some content going to be including some contemporary feminists on on these postings as well and some of the more contemporary ones may not be found um in wikipedia but for the most part usually that i'm going to be using wikipedia as a source now i know a lot of people um since this is not a college course um i don't have to worry about the whole very very variability issue but wikipedia believe it or not is pretty is pretty reliable um, every so often I find, you know, situations that are off or whatever. People don't have a pro- people have a problem with it because, you know, people can go in and type <laughs> in, and you know anybody can have a page. But most of uh, most of what I got, you know, kind of most of what I've gotten so far line pretty much lines up with you know other verified sources. So. Um, the main emphasis on the on the um, "Ain't I a Woman" speech was the lack of recognition um, of black women that black women received, especially during women's suffrage. So you've heard people make the um, charge about you know women's lib or feminism, you know white feminism, which I addressed um, in the very first posting with Miss Pittman Hughes about Gloria Steinman, uh, Steinem reaching out to um, Miss Pittman Hughes during second wave feminism. Um, so, uh, you know, trying to include black women in because, you know, we, we, you know, need the fight for rights really is included in all women. Um, women of color tended to have it a whole lot worse. So if anybody really needed to fight for our rights, we did. So women's suffrage and the part that so, so, um, Sojourner Truth was a part of would be more first wave feminism. And I'm going to um, talk about the first and second waves of feminism as this month goes on as well. So for the next 10 years, Miss Truth would speak before dozens, perhaps even hundreds of audiences she got a chance to meet um, Harriet Beecher Stowe, who is the woman who is famous for writing um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Um, one famous moment 
it, that she is known for is when she revealed her breasts during a speech because hecklers accused her of being a man. Remember, she had a very foreboding presence about her that caused people, you know, she was so strong that people wanted to, well, you're, you, are you really a woman? And so she was, you know, it was rumored that she opened up her blouse to show that yes, she is indeed a woman. She bared her breast. Other meetings that um, she gave speeches at were the mob convention, um, and seven of of seven September seventh, eighteen fifty three, the American Equal Rights Association um, convention, and May May ninth and tenth, eighteen sixty seven, she happened to be the main convention speaker. Um, it, it, her speech was in three sessions on this particular one, the eighth anniversary of Negro freedom on New Year's Day um, in 1871, the second convention of the American Women's Suffrage Association in Boston, 1871. Um, During this speech, and now this is not a direct quote, but uh, the, the quote that she had was along these lines, Um, Women's rights are essential, but not just for women, but for the benefit of all creation, including men, for women are the mothers of them. So you've heard people say, you know, many people um, make, even in the Christian church, make the argument for women's rights because women, because men, even Jesus had to pass through a woman to get here. So it's pretty, you know, one of the things, I always said that one of the reasons why single parenting can be, you know, is, is a little bit harder is because you're doing a job that from the beginning was meant to be done by two people. That's one of the reasons why um, in recent years, we're starting to work more on co-parenting or joint custody. Um, something that I support very passionately because, number one, you hear men complain. You know, one of the things I was hearing was men complaining about visitation, sucking, and favoring the mother. So I'm like, okay, well, we're going to give y'all a chance to step up and be with the kid more. Number one, it gives the mother a little bit of a break because, like I said, you know, when you're not under the same roof, married to each other, and, and sometimes even then it can be hard. <laughs> especially nowadays because both parents are more likely to work and hold outside jobs so you don't have um what you used to have back in the day and let's face it even when you don't have an outside job many times the lion's share of the housework is still kind of kind of still falls on women so you still have to try to split things up and everything so you know we're raising children like i have said several times online raising children is a job it is one of the it, it's the least paid but it's one of the most rewarding you know if it's done right and it, you know and it's not a perfect science because you can do everything right and still have hateful kids <laughs> you know some some kids just don't get it Anyway, topics that she, um, that Miss Truth preached about were abolition, women's rights, prison reform, um, and again, she also preached against capital punishment. Amongst, among, among her most influential supporters were Amy Post, Parker Pillsbury, Francis Gage, Wendell Phillips, let me see, yeah, Wendell Phillips, William Lloyd Garrison, Laura Smith Haviland, Lucretia Mott, Ellen G. White, and Susan B. Anthony. And, you know, you know your history, you know Susan B. Anthony was a part of women's suffrage as well. So women, there, you know, even though um, with first wave feminism and women's suffrage black women were not were not necessarily included a lot of that had to do with women in the south who wanted to participate 
but still didn't really want to fool with black women. But there were still black women being part of it. And Sojourner Truth was one of them. Um, and I may touch on, on, you know, like I said, I may touch on first and second wave feminism and talk about the different movements and what the drawbacks were and how they were still able to do that. So Sojourner Truth died at her Battle Creek home um, 11 women (laughs) because I keep um, November 26, 1886 and she was buried at Oak Hill Cemetery. Now um, because because you know the post I didn't want to I wasn't able to include everything but like I said if you want to really read in depth the information that I have came out of Wikipedia um, if you want to hear if you want to read some more about she because she this was a busy sister and she was sort of a pre she was sort of a predecessor to Harriet Tubman what people don't know is that Harriet Tubman was one of many people that celebrated um, that celebrated different milestones even after Sigourney, Sigourney, Sojourner Truth's death. So she was kind of a predecessor to Harriet Tubman, maybe even a role model to Harriet Tubman. So she's definitely somebody you want to read about. And Harriet may wind up, and Harriet herself may even wind up being somebody that I post that I post about during this month um we will see but um anyway um as I'm recording this it's um Friday morning it's after one o'clock so tonight you know of course will be uh, tonight if you're reading you know you're hearing this um tonight um Friday the 7th um will be it will be um, eclectic weekends. I'm sorry, I'm just stuttering my behind off. Um, will be eclectic weekends tonight. I'm doing um, women in hip hop, and you know, it, it, I look forward to you know any song requests that you have and everything. The eighth, of course, will be the sec my sec the second half of my review for Jackie Rod's Georgia Stories on my mind. I will also be, there will also be an interview for her and a guest post for her. So I'm, so it's going to be a pretty full posting. I've also, if you've seen, paid attention to my postings this week, I'm also going to be participating in a blog book tour for Valerie um, Nefora's um, I Asked to Win. Okay. And that'll be... I will I will be post I will I will discuss that um tonight at eclectic weekends because I forget what day I said that was going to be on I think it may be I think it may be the following Saturday because I've been um requesting that my participation be on Saturdays it's just a whole lot easier to put mine on Saturdays than it was to try to do it on Fridays so you guys um be blessed I will talk to you tonight. I look forward to tonight's show. I broadcast. I always look forward to playing music for you guys. Um, Friday night is always a fun time. If you are in Ohio, stay warm. Do everything you can to stay warm because it's supposed to be 30 degrees out right now. It's about 30 degrees out. Tomorrow morning is supposed to be um, still very snowy. If you are any place else where your weather is not all that great, um, try your level best to stay warm. Um, heed the weather warnings. Um, dress warmly. Bundle up. Um, bundle your children up. I saw one lady on the news that was talking about how her kids were waiting to hear what the school announcements were going to be. And, and, you know, I always think it's funny because not much has changed. Um, I can remember when we loved snow days when I was a kid. I can remember when my kids liked snow days, liked to hear about snow days and everything, especially if it was an off day for me because it meant they got to stay home with mommy. And I would just make them a nice big breakfast and we would watch, they would watch cartoons or all their kids stuff and they got to play outside in the snow. So you guys, whatever you do tomorrow, whatever you do later on today, 
Um, enjoy your try to enjoy your day. Stay warm. Drink lots of tea and hot, lots of warm liquids. Drink you know tea, um, hot chocolate. Um, enjoy if you if you have the luxury of being able to if it's if it winds up being a snow day and your kids stay home, um, and you know and you have the luxury of being home with them, enjoy them while they're small because they um, grow so fast. Um, I look at my grandson now and he will be 18 months in probably a couple of months. And, you know, you see it. I mean, if you look at how much they change from the time you bring them by the from the time you bring them home to the from the hospital that first year, they're not the same kid. (laughs) They're not the same kid at all. They're the same kid as far as their personhood, but they grow so much. So, you know, this is the time if you if you have the luxury of staying home with them and enjoying a snow day, um, put some put some DVDs in like now, you know, I don't even think we do DVDs anymore. Now we do streaming and Netflix and YouTube. I've become addicted to YouTube, you know, put some nice stuff on to watch with them and everything. Um, Just enjoy it. Read them, read them, read them a nice book sing play together just have a good time just have a just make the most of you know make the most to play video games if you really want to me and justin used to play super mario brothers so like whatever you decide to do just make sure to make it a, make it a good memory you know take pictures if you want to but just enjoy them because they don't stay little long Anyway, you guys be blessed. I love you and I will see you on the next next I will see you on the next posting and tonight on um, Eclectic Weekends. Hello, you have reached the message line for Adam's Rib Media Ministry. If you would like to give me a shout out, recommend some topics for discussion, or give an opinion about some topics that I've already discussed, either here on my podcast or on my blogs, leave me a message and I will get right back to you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.